Hello, this is Pastor Mike Jones with the Life Together in Christ devotion. And today we're going to be looking at a wonderful psalm, Psalm 27. And in this psalm, I see uh, the secret to the kind of life of peace and security and joy that we each want. And in this, uh, David gives us that secret. So let's pray together as we prepare to uh, look at the words of David uh, that God has given him for us today. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this word from David. Uh, these words of promise and hope that you have spoken through David to us. And Lord, we pray that in these words, we would find the source of hope and security and peace and contentment and joy in our lives. Lord, we pray that today you would sustain our hearts and fill our hearts with your presence to give us these fruits of the Spirit. In your name we pray. Amen. So if you'd like to turn with me to Psalm 27, uh, this is an awesome psalm. It has a great promise right in the middle of it for us. And so this Psalm 27, verse 1 and following. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then... I will be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies around me. At a sacred tent, I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, Lord. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, God, my Savior. Though my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn me over to the desire of my foes, for false witnesses rise up against me, spouting malicious accusations. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and take heart, and wait for the Lord. And so right here uh, in verse 13 near the end, it says, I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The land of the living is um, our world today. And so uh, David is confident that if he does, if he seeks the Lord's face, uh, he will see the goodness of the Lord today in his life. And so this scripture holds true for us today. It doesn't mean that in some day down the line in the future we'll see the goodness, but this scripture today tells us we will see the goodness of the Lord today. And so here's the secret to the life we want. It starts with verse 4, it is contained in 4, 5, and 6. One thing I ask from the Lord this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. So the house of the Lord and the temple in the Old Testament were the place of God's presence. And so here in this, David is saying that if I go to the place of God's presence and I seek him, then... Uh, and I look upon his beauty, upon the Lord's goodness, then in the day of trouble, God will keep him safe in his dwelling. He will hide David 
in the shelter of a sacred tent and set him high upon a rock. And so this uh, scripture here is laying forth the importance of us connecting with God in worship. Uh, now, we can't gather at the church, but the good news is after uh, the death and resurrection of Christ in the temple, uh, the there was a area of the temple that only the priest could go, and it was behind a curtain. And when uh, Christ was resurrected, uh, that holy area in the temple uh, was separated from the rest of the temple where the people were by a curtain. And only the priest could go behind that curtain and be with the presence of the Lord. But upon Christ's resurrection, that tent, that curtain was torn in half, indicating that really the presence of God has opened up to all of us. And so now uh, the house of the Lord, the temple of the Lord has become our bodies. So the Holy Spirit dwells within you and I. So no longer do we have to go to a place uh, to experience the presence of God. Now, it is good for us to gather together in church and worship together uh, because um, it sets aside a special place, a special time. But we're told in Scripture not to forsake the gathering together of brothers and sisters because there's something that happens when we're all together in community and the presence of God is in that place. Uh, where we can edify and strengthen one another in the faith, where we can worship together as a community. There's something special that happens. But in addition to that, this scripture points out the truth that we are to seek God, to seek his face and look upon his beauty or his goodness and to seek him in his temple. So to seek God in the place where he resides, which is now in our hearts through the Holy Spirit. And when we seek God and we dwell upon his goodness and his beauty, then when the day of trouble comes, God will keep us safe in his dwelling. He will keep us safe uh, in that place where we meet God. He will keep us, uh, he will protect us, he will hide us um, in the shelter of a sacred tent and set us upon a high rock. And so what I believe is going on, this protection and this putting us on a high rock has a lot to do with our heart and our attitude. That even when trouble comes, God will lift our hearts and lift us up and put us upon a high rock upon Jesus Christ and the promises of Christ. And in that will come confidence, will come hope, will come security will come joy. And so when this happens, when our heart is lifted up by God, because we take time to dwell upon him and think about his goodness, and we take time to worship God and spend time with God in communion and prayer and reading scripture, it says that in that place, when we worship God and we connect to him, we will have shouts of joy. We will sing and make music to the Lord. And so God is talking about the truth that when we worship and connect with God, in our hearts, there will be joy produced. And so to have joy and have confidence and have peace and have security and have hope in this world today, when our enemies advance against us, when the coronavirus advances in this world, God is telling us no matter what is going on around you. If you connect with me, if you worship me, and if you find that place in your heart where I reside and you connect with the Holy Spirit, I will do something in your heart. I will take you to a new place of life that doesn't depend on the circumstances of the world. And so today, as we listen to this psalm, in essence, we are right now worshiping with God in his holy temple. Our heart and God's spirit are communing with one another within our body. And so my hope in this is our hearts are each lifted today, that we are each filled with joy despite what's going on in the world around us, that we are given a sense of hope and security, a sense of peace, an idea that God is our light and our salvation, that we have nothing to fear 
that God is our stronghold of our life and that we have nothing to be afraid of. And so today, may we wait for the Lord. May we be strong in our heart. May we take heart and wait for the Lord in the land of the living. Let's pray. Dear God, we lift our hearts to you. For you are a mighty God. You have created everything we see. You are the author of life and the giver of life. You are the preserver of life. And God, we know that in you, the one who has created everything, the one has, who has all power and is all knowing, that in you, we have nothing to fear. We pray, Lord, that you would protect our hearts, that you would lift us to that high place upon Jesus Christ, that you would fill our hearts with joy today and with peace and confidence and security and hope. And Lord, no matter what happens in the world around us, no matter what would happen to us, we give you thanks that you hold us in your hand and in you is our hope and our promise. In your name we pray, amen. God loves you. And I love you. Have a great day today. And may the Lord lift your heart today. Amen.